Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve same tree, lead code number 100. So we are given the roots of two binary trees called P and Q, and we wanna write a function to check if they are the same or not. So two binary trees are considered the same if they are structurally identical and the nodes have the same value. So if you were to draw them, they look the same. These two trees do look exactly the same. It is a one with a left of two and a right of three. Same thing on both sides, that would return true. However, this example, the structure is different here. So we still have two nodes, we still have it being one and then two, but here it's the left is the two and the right is null, and here the right is two and the left is null. So that's a structural fault, and so that would return false. This last example here, it looks very similar, except it's basically mirrored, and so it's one and then two is the left, but over here it's one and then right is the two. Now the way that we'd solve this is to basically do a DFS where we go through both trees at the exact same time. So if we called this DFS on both of these roots, well, they would look right here. And we'd say, okay, well, are they actually nodes? Like, are they not null? Well, they're both not null. Okay, great. Now, do their values match? Their values do match. Okay, that means it's the same so far. But we need to make sure that they both match on the left as well as on the right here. So we do a DFS where we basically look, if we do DFS going left first, we would go over here. Now, firstly, are both of these valid nodes? Yes, they are. Do their values match? Yes, they are both twos. And so it matches over here. Now, we'd also call it on their left, which happens to be none. Now, are either of these none? Yes. Are both of them none? Yes, they are actually both null. Well, that is a base case that would actually be a signal of true, where they are matching. It is a structural equality saying that both of these nodes here, both of their lefts are null. And so that is actually a good thing. If one of them was, for example, some other node over here, well, then we would have the case where this left is a node, but this is not. And so there is a structural difference here. And so that would be a false signal because because one node is there and the other is not. Okay, but let's pretend that this wasn't the case here and that this node wasn't there. Great, we would have found that both of these lefts were null. That's a good thing. We'd find that both of their rights are actually null and so that balances out as well. So if that were the case, then this left actually would balance. Does the right balance? Well, over here, we would see that, oh, actually no, these are both nodes, but their values are different. And so the right side has an issue. And so we'd want the total answer again to be false because the right did not balance. Okay, so that's basically the idea here. We would do this DFS where we travel both trees at the same time. If we ever find a structural difference or we find that the node values are different like this, then we'd want our overall thing to return false. Otherwise, if everything checks out, then we should be returning true. Okay, so we're gonna write a recursive helper function, which I'm going to call balanced. And this is going to take two nodes, both P and Q. And I'm calling them P and Q, but it's going to be whatever part of P and Q or whatever root of P and Q we happen to be looking at. And so we'd say, hey, if we don't have P and we don't have Q, well, that means both of them are null. And so as we saw, that is actually a structural equivalence. And so we'd want to return true in that case. Now, otherwise, we know that one of these nodes is actually a valid node. Here. This is just to check where both of them are null. What if one of them is null? We could check if we have P and we don't have Q, or we have that we have Q and we don't have P. Now what this condition says here is, well, look at this here. If we have that P is a valid node, but we don't have Q, well, that means we do have P, we don't have Q, that is a structural difference. And so this would be a case where we return false. Same thing over here, it's just the mirror. Maybe you have Q, but you don't have P. And so again, you have one, but not the other, and so that would be returning false. Now, otherwise, if we get down here, well, we know that they're both not null, and we also know that one node is not null total. So that means that neither node is null at this point. And so you can safely check if p.val is not equal to q.val, then you want to return false again. Now, otherwise, you currently match up here. So there's no issue in your current node. But you also need to make sure, this is the recursive part, that you're also balanced on the p.left and the q.left. So as we saw in the visualization, we try reverse down the same time. We need the left to be balanced and we need the right to be balanced on p.right and q.right as well. Okay, and then from there, we can actually just return the value of this helper function. We can return that we are balanced at p and q, which we'll call it on our original p and q. And if we were to run this, then that will work just fine. 
Okay, so let's think about the time and space complexity of this solution. Well, the time complexity is basically just going through each of the trees. So we're doing a depth first search through both of the trees at the same time. That's basically just two times the work of a normal DFS. And so if they're different trees, let's just say that N is the number of nodes in P and M is the number of nodes in Q. So N and M, this is definitely not gonna take more than O of N plus M time. So that's basically just saying we're visiting both of the trees. Okay, and the space complexity, this is ultimately doing a depth first search. And so we need to consider the call stack, the recursive call stacks. We'll call this big O of HP plus HQ. So that's basically that you'd have the height of the P tree open, and you'd also have the height of the Q tree open. At the very bottom of our call stack here, you would have their heights open. And so the recursion would take up space, therefore that is the space. And by the way, a lot of people would consider just N to be the number of nodes in the bigger tree. So you could just say this is big O of N. And then you could also just say the space is big O of H, or again, like the height of the bigger tree. So this is probably what most people would write, but it's a little less formal. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.